thank you for tuning in to a session on the Niper virus. My name is Judy Wong, and I'll be talking about the emerging infectious disease. Now, just a fun fact, for those of you who have watched the movie Contagion, the MEV1 virus was actually inspired by the Niper virus. The Niper virus is also known as a Category C agent and DSL4 pathogen that is found in pit fruit bats. It infects its host as a RNA virus. This virus was first seen in Malaysia in a small province known as Kampung Baru Sungai Nagpa, where it got its name. It was first seen in 1999 and first thought to be Japanese encephalitis. There were 283 suspected cases between 1998 to 1999, and there were 109 deaths. That led to a culling of 1 million pigs. Even pigs that were exported from Malaysia to Singapore infected arbiter workers. Now this disease wasn't seen again until 2001 where it reappeared in Bangladesh and India through sporadic outbreaks of encephalitis. This strain was found to be different from the one that was detected in Malaysia and Singapore. This virus is now known to have an ability to transmit through direct human contact. Uh, this, this, this virus actually is closely linked to seasonal patterns of Southeast Asia in between months December to May. It's closely, closely associated to bat breeding season and palm sap harvesting season. In Bangladesh, there's a cultural tradition where um, raw date palm sap is actually collected in open clay pots overnight and then consumed. Now the problem with that is the raw date palm sap is usually contaminated by bat feces, urine, and saliva. Some symptoms that we see in animals infected by this virus are usually uh, subclinical. Some pigs may actually develop barking pig syndrome and neurological symptoms, and in worst cases, sudden death. In humans, we know that there's an incubation time of 5 to 14 days, where the patient firstly develops fever, headaches, drowsiness, and some may develop acute respiratory distress. In certain cases, there is a latent infection, where after a few months to a few years of the initial exposure, they may develop encephalitis. Currently, we know that the transmission is due to the closely overlap of bat habitats and fruit orchards. The partially eaten fruits are usually contaminated by bat urine, feces, and saliva, and then the pigs eat it. The pigs are also known to have amplifying effects where the virus can then be transmitted to humans. And now currently there's a case fatality rate of 74.5%. To diagnose this virus at the acute phase, uh, we can actually use reverse transcription PCR on throat and nasal cultures, and better yet, cerebral spinal fluid samples, urine and blood samples. In the convalescent stage, uh, we can use ELISA to detect specific IgM and IgG levels, and in worsening cases, we can use immunohistochemistry. Now currently, there is no vaccine available for humans, and there is no um, drug treatment for the virus, and primarily intensive supportive care is recommended. There is an antiviral drug known as Vibrovarin, but further testing still needs to be input. Um, now here we can see that the scope of the virus pertains to the green and scribe region of Southeast Asia, which is where the uh, food bats actually migrate around. Um, currently Areas such as Philippines, Cambodia, Thailand, China, and India are susceptible regions to this virus. People who are most high risk are those who consume raw date palm sap, those who are in hospitals during seasonal outbreaks, and those who care for NIPA infected patients. To decrease the spread of disease, uh, we would recommend to not eat raw date palm sap because the virus can actually survive up to three to seven days in the sap. And in cases where um, consumption is wanted, one should heat the sap up 
above 100 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes to inactivate the virus. Um, proper fruit washing and peeling of the fruit should be um, done before consumption and proper hand washing hygiene should be implemented to decrease the spread of the virus. And that concludes the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening.